next paper by Dr. Sunil Kanekal. Good morning, everyone. Uh, today, I'll be talking to you about one of the surgical techniques that is a fluorescein assisted subretinal TPA injection for submacular hemorrhage. I don't have any financial uh, disclosure. As we know, the submacular hemorrhage has to be tackled basically to reduce the tractional changes it induces and the toxicity which causes to the photoreceptors. If the submacular hemorrhage is dense, thick and subfovial, it needs a surgical intervention for clearage. The previous studies have shown that subretinal TPA results are much better than the intravitreal uh, TPA uh, with injection of intravitreal TPA. The main purpose of our study was to assess the efficacy of uh, fluorescein assisted or a fluorescein stained subretinal TPA delivery for uh, submacular hemorrhage. This is a prospective study of uh, 18 eyes of 18 patients undergoing pass plana vitrectomy for uh, submacular hemorrhage. 10 patients were uh, neovascular AMD patients and 8 had a PCV. All patients underwent a 23 gauge pass plana vitrectomy. Here, a 2 ml TPA in the concentration of 25 microgram and 0 0.ml. This is a 41 gauge candle attached to the, the silicon uh, injection thing, and the fluorescent strip is used to stain to get a colored solution. So you tend to get an orange color solution. Once you have done that, a silicon oil syringe with a 41 gauge candle was then connected to the vitrectomy system and the injection was titrated to allow the slow trickle of TPA into the subretinal space. TPA was delivered into the subretinal space until the adequate blub is formed. So you can use the multiple sites also. You can, you can see the clear cut blub and you can make out the, the colored blub which is very well formed in the subretinal space. Once you are done, you can do a fluid air exchange and inject in uh, intravitreal gas. The primary outcome of this was to assess the successful delivery of subretinal TPA. The secondary outcome was whether the displacement of submacular hemorrhage occurred and the change in visual acuity from uh, baseline. The functional assessment was done with the help of microperimetry and ERG. We defined the improvement of uh, best corrected visual acuity as uh, improvement of more than uh, two lines on ATDRS chart. The retinal sensitivity values uh, was measured in mean uh, plus or minus uh, st standard deviation. Snellen's acuity was converted to logmar and the statistical analysis was done. The mean wage was uh, 72 years plus or minus nine years. Mean follow-up was around 463 days. There were equal male and female patients. Uh, none of the patients had a visual acuity better than 20 by 200. The best equity, uh, corrected visual equity was hand motion, motion in 40%, counting fingers in 40%, 20 by 400 in 20%. The average duration of submacular hemorrhage was 4.9 days. Some patients had systemic hypertension and very few had an, an anticoagulant therapy. Four were treatment navy. Ten had a previous history of anti vegf therapy. Four eyes had a focal laser plus anti vegf therapy. In all the eyes, we had a successful delivery of subretinal hemorrhage. But uh, three eyes showed the reflux of uh, subretinal TPA in them. The injection was the cessation was injection was stopped and the secondary site was chosen. The blood formation allowed the space for the separate TPA to be delivered to get a good enzymatic activity and the resolution of the hemorrhage. SF6 was the main gas used. Post operatively, the submacular hemorrhage was the, achieved in all cases except one eye had a submacular hemorrhage. Visual acuity improved from 1.53 logmar units to 1.068. Overall, nine eyes had a gained visual acuity, eight had a stable vision, and one had a lost visual acuity. This was the, the pre-op and post-op pictures. There was a significant improvement in uh, retinal sensitivity by detected by microperimetry. ERG performed at one month showed, post-operative follow-up showed 30% decrease in photopic response, 50% uh, amplitude reduction uh, in, in the setting of recurrent submacular hemorrhage, which was seen in one eye, and normal systemic response was seen in rest of the eyes. So the fluorescein sodium eliminated from the circulation occurs usually typically in 24 hours. Uh, previous studies have also shown that retinal toxicity has not been reported with intraretinal or subretinal fluorescein. Hemorrhage displacement was successfully achieved in all the patients. So what are the advantages of th this technique is, one is the improved visualization of blood formation, full weaving of the TPA distribution in the subretinal space. Fluorescein staining of the 41 gauge puncture site allows the re-entry into the same puncture site. The ability to weave the reflux TPA into the vitreous cavity allows to quickly uh, leave that site and move to the next site. With the use of viscous fluid tubing and uh, foot pedal control, the surgeon can in a, inject this uh, subretinal TP in a controlled fashion without any need of an assistant. So in conclusion, this technique 
allowed us for an improved visualization of subretinal TPA delivery, not associated with a unique toxicity concern or intraoperative complications. Of course, this, our sample size was uh, small, and uh, we didn't have a much long-term follow-up. Uh, with this, I would like to conclude my paper. Uh, thank you. That was a nice paper. Uh, one thing is that uh, the fluorescein uh, strip which you used, do you autoclave that? It's a sterile strip, ma'am, which is commercially available. Too. Okay. Uh, the remaining 17 cases in your series, they were worse than this one or uh, they were similar to this that one? The one ad which had a recurrent submacular hemorrhage also with pneumatic displacement, it, uh, it regained the visual acuity, sir. No, no. Huh. The uh, vitrectomy which you showed. Oh, yes. The other 17 cases, uh, they had uh, more dense uh, submacular hemorrhage than More or less, sir, except for the two patients which had a PCV patients which had a much denser hemorrhage than the nevascular MD patients. Because the vitrectomy which you showed, uh, I, at least I would have just done a pneumatic displacement. and. But it was a very thick, it. dense hemorrhage, sir. That was, we thought of going ahead with a surgical procedure. Uh, 